Hello, my name is Travis Smith. I'm an instructor at Healthland EMS. I'm here today to talk to you about the use of glucometers. As you can see, we have a glucometer that has been calibrated, a test strip, one alcohol prep, one lancet, a sharps container, and a band-aid. As always, before performing any skill, we utilize our appropriate BSI equipment. In this case, I will be utilizing safety glasses and gloves. Let's talk a little about when we would need to determine a patient's blood glucose level using a glucometer. When a patient has an altered level of consciousness, a non-traumatic seizure, or is unconscious, we should use the glucometer to help determine if low or high blood sugar is the cause. Also, if the patient is identified or you suspect they are diabetic, you should check their blood sugar level. A normal blood glucose reading is 60 to 120 milligrams per deciliter. Any reading above or below is considered hyper or hypoglycemia and may be contributing to your patient's presentation. You should be aware of some complications that can occur with blood glucometry. For example, you can get erroneous readings. Make sure that the reading you get matches your patient presentation. Also, if you take too long transferring the drop of blood to the test strip, the blood could clot, forcing you to clean the site and acquire more blood and causing additional discomfort to the patient. Another potential complication is the risk taken when dealing with a person's blood, so be careful about exposure to pathogens. Finally, remember the glucometer is a machine. It could malfunction, preventing you from getting accurate readings. This is common if the meter gets cold. Now we should check out our equipment, making sure it works before we explain the procedure to the patient. The glucometer should be checked to make sure it does not have any cracks or obvious damage. Make sure it turns on and that the code matches the one on the test strip container. Next, I will take a test strip out of the container. Don't bend the strip or touch the end where you will place the blood sample. Next, I will make sure my lancet is ready to go and that I have an alcohol prep. Now that I have made certain my equipment is ready, I need to take the time to talk to my patient and explain what I need to do. Obviously, if he is unconscious, I could skip this step, but I may need to explain to his family. Depending on your glucometer, you may need to hold off turning on the meter until after you have prepped the patient's fingertip. I clean the tip of the finger with an alcohol prep and wait for the site to dry completely before I poke it with the lancet. If I poke the finger before the alcohol has dried, it could cause falsely high readings. Once I have poked his finger, I then dispose of the lancet in the sharps container to eliminate any chance of getting poked myself. I then focus on my patient's finger, squeezing it to get a drop of blood. Once I have the drop of blood, I transfer it to the test strip I prepared earlier. I then place the strip into the glucometer. While the glucometer is getting a reading, I apply a band-aid to the puncture site. As you can see, I have a good reading with no error messages. I then record the measurement on my patient care report. The measurement of blood glucose is a useful skill to help guide how you care for your patients. Good luck and stay safe.